fun, fun, fun all day long. Flying over the lifeboat, open to you. We're sitting on the Sunshine Mountain. <laughs> right. Let's have a go here, eh? Staff is in charge of publicity. Right. Blythe. Capital B. OK. Then we'll come down to Marshall. It's not A-I, it's I-E. Then we'll come to Coast yes. Radio. Yes. With a K? Yes. Sure. Coast Radio with a K. Malcolm MacDonald, the name. Capital M, capital M. Supermac, you're joking. How did you manage Supermac? Uh -huh. Good friend very, of mine. Very good friend. Everybody, a very warm welcome to the Blythe Independent Lifeboats. Have a wonderful day. Malcolm, thank you very much for that, and uh, thanks for coming down. Bad weather and arrival event in the town centre conspire against them. With a £150 donation, we've made £643.30. So it's still not even up anywhere near what we would normally make. We're very, very down. We normally make a good Two to two and a half thousand on an open day or something like that. But had no to do with crew, had no to do with fundraisers. It was embarrassing. Embarrassing, but. Despite their best efforts, the volunteers aren't raising enough, and Barry thinks he needs to bring in a professional. He wants to open a lifeboat cafe run by a paid manager with a vision. And here he is. It's got to be glitterized, it's got to be shone up and it's got to be shown that you're professional over and beyond just going out onto the water and that hadn't been happening. Barry wants Vince to turn the two isolated lifeboat porter cabins into a money spinning venture. We've got two main sets of customers on, on the riverside at the moment. We've got the, the working types that come down here that want their the high fat sandwiches and that on a morning for their breakfast and that before they go and do the hard work. Plus at the weekends, in the summer in particular, we've got the the nicer types, if you want to put it that way, that want more of a high tea. Never the twain should meet. I think we'll have to have a mix and match. Some of the unpaid volunteers are surprised to learn that Vince is on a salary of £300 a week. Well, I've been here the past two days from half nine till half eleven well, and I went back to work and I'm not getting paid for it, it's voluntary. And that bastard's walked around with 12 quid in his fucking pocket. It's just not on it. Oh, hey, stuff that, like, nowhere. It's not on, like, this is not on at all, this thing. But the thing is, what we're going to do about it, when we, like, see Barry and tell him what you're going to do about it, is she going to give that? Give us that twelve hundred pound back. They put yeah. it back in one kitty or not? Stuff that way. But I'll tell you what it is, lads. I'm not going to do any more fundraising until this right. gets sorted. Why is this man getting this money right where I could have been doing it? You know, you should have turned around and said, "Look, Billy, you're not working. You're down here all the time. Do you fancy doing it?" And I would have turned around and said, "No problem at all." Me, three hundred pound a week. I wouldn't know what to do with three hundred pound a week. I you know what I'm I'm living on fifty pounds a week now. Now I, I wouldn't know what to do with three hundred pounds a week. Vince's cafe hit the buffers. It proved impossible to get enough electricity to the lifeboat porter cabins. Barry feels his attempts to transform the lifeboat organization are constantly thwarted. A little coffee biscuit to go with it. Alright. There you go. Why do not want to see how many checks? Why do they not want to show competency? And why do they not want to show their fitness to be a volunteer life boatman, crew member, cox and whatever? Bemuses me. Bemuses me. No other organisation that I know of have been involved in and are likely to be involved in would let somebody through their front door without them basic checks. We do need these things in place, and I am putting them in place, 
but it takes time to get them in place. We kind of just cl click our fingers and get these things. Kerry is doing his best, but Barry is impatient. Hello? Ker Kerry, I texted you 10 days ago, you know, and you haven't replied to it. I sent that text with 10 days ago for you and Gordon to update the members to see who's trained, who's competent. What I'm trying to say to you, Kerry, what I'm saying is, we have told you how it's going to be run from now. I'm not going to mess on, Kerry. Make no mistake about it. <laughs> to be honest, I'm getting pretty sick of it. The morale has died off, and it's all through, through one man. I've, I've given up, no worrying about it. I've lost a lot of sleep over it. I do worry me dad getting too much put onto him because he is getting older and he looks really tired. And me dad stresses about everything, everything to do with the boat anyway. And I mean, you can only be pushed so far, you know, it, uh, it gets to the point where it, it starts grating on you. And, the kind of job I'm in, I cannot have that on top of me all the time. Thinking about the lifeboat when I'm at work. I, I cannot have that. I'm, I'm working with heavy engineering and it's, uh, it's too dangerous. Come on. Come on. Kerry is reaching the end of his tether. Then Barry pushes him too far. Barry doesn't just want paperwork on the crew, he wants the boat and jetty inspected too. He makes a unilateral decision to take the boat out of action. Only then does he tell Kerry. Kerry, I'm going to be knocking the boat off the run. I'm going to get the jetty structurally surveyed by a proper structural company external to any of us. It's the last straw for Kerry. That's him off the, that's Kerry finished. Put the phone down. He's not happy about the board being not off the run, but he's not going to let us explain it. This is this is what you're up against, you see. I'm the head of operations. Uh, what gives him the right to ring the coast guards up and take the boat off service? If there's a couple of missing procedures or procedures need updating, we do that. You don't have to take the boat off service to do that. If every factory in the country shut their factories down because a procedure wasn't in place, the country wouldn't run. After slamming the phone down, Kerry sends Barry an angry text. It is with deep regret inform you all of my intention to leave the constitution. All will be explained in my letter to the chairman. Take care, Kerry. He's resigned. I haven't left. My text says my intentions. Not that I had. I was resigned. Eh? I was resigned. I replied, uh, Kerry, disappointing, but I understand your position. Please drop keys into my house. And I don't know how this one's going to work out. That's what I'm saying. I think he, he has no way has he got the good intentions of the boat. Just rip the heart out, man. Rip the heart out of it. You will not destroy this boat. Been here too long. And the people that have been together for this many years aren't going to let one person stand down. That means a lot. Everybody will stand together and bring it all back. And you'll see that happen. It's your way of life. I couldn't imagine not taking the kids down the station, having Ellis stand in there in his life jacket. He is the future of the lifeboat, the simple as that. Barry thinks because he got the boat and he's, he could do this and he could do that. I think I'll be Handing me keys in. It's like a Barry Elliott, he's a fucking idiot. And that's it, done, finished. For me. I'm just sick to death to him pleasing and doing what he wants. That's a big part of my life, do you know that? It's a big part of my life, Nick. And I'm walking away from it like that. I didn't want to, but I've got to. The only time I'll be back on that boat is if he finishes. If he just disappears out of it. That's it. The results of Barry's survey on the jetty are in. 
both the gangway and the pontoon need repairs. Barry bars the crew from the boat until further notice. As they wait to see when Barry will put the boat back into service, the crew congregate at the lifeboat station, even those who have resigned. I will not be back on that boat until Barry Elliott is completely finished with it. Until he's with the picture. Oh, fucking hell, man. Yes, he's sad. And you some time with the boat. <clears throat> I need something to keep us going though. I'm fucking Jerry, I'm fucking lost oh, no, day, no, you know what I mean? Between no. fucking join the coast guards or something, I'll find something. You know? But I don't know if I'll fucking get around there anyway, because you've got to pass a minute, right? <laughs> 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 yeah, I've passed a minute, you know what I mean? So what you're trying to say, we take out here. <laughs> <laughs> What the lifeboat volunteers need now is a miracle. In another fundraising effort, a local church group is renting the lifeboat porter cabins for meetings, so perhaps they'll get one. Lord, they go out in all weathers yeah. to save, O oh Lord, the people who are in distress in the waters. And a blessing goes out for allowing us to rent this small porter cabin. Yeah. It's only small, Lord but you brought us here and we're pleased completely with it. And we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. 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 Give your heart to Jesus. No, Give your heart to Jesus. Oh. Believe in God. No. You don't no. want to go to hell. Oh, it's going to make in... a burning fire. Oh, well, I'll go to hell. You want to go to heaven, born. darling. I'll it's a born. better place all together. Have you got a Bible? Nah. Get yourself a little Bible because God is the Word. It's on the sport. Yeah, that's my Bible. Sunday sport. <laughs> nice meeting you, Carl. You've, uh, you've forgotten your cross, honey. Oh, yeah. Good on you. Thank you. Let's bring it back. Thank you. Bye. Back at his mansion, lifeboat owner Barry is ready to take on anyone, even his own son, Dean. You can do anything you want to be if you want to do it. Hey, game on. Done, Dean. Oh. One nil. Oh. Seven, three. But I love to win. I love to win everything. Oh, well done. Get in. Oh. I was his coach and manager at football. Wasn't that, Dean? Mm-hmm. It was a bit wild at times, wasn't I? I was shouting at all the kids, though. <laughs> so I did the wrong I like, get in. Oh, they wanted me, didn't they, Dean? They didn't want us. Didn't, they didn't. Now Barry's got another big match to prepare for. Faced with a growing mutiny by the crew, Barry's called a meeting of all the lifeboat volunteers. It's showdown time. I can say you're going to be a rather tense and heated night. Well, I think they're going to kick off. They're definitely going to kick off tonight. Because they just want to have a pop at Barry. I said to Barry earlier on, I'd like to come along. But he doesn't think it's a good idea. I mean, I want to see how all the bad language that's going to be said. The man in black is the last one through the saloon doors. Remain seated, remain seated. Yeah. Right, I'll be the, the chairman of the meeting, so we'll keep an orderly conduct in here, you know what I mean? And I'll control it. I don't think so, like, we'll all have what say what of we're going to ask we'll, we'll here. we'll keep an orderly control. Right, that's every, fair yeah? enough. Yeah, so what I would do is I would, I would, I would step in, see, I'm going to put this mess right. 
I'm going to cheer this, this group of people here. We we'll all need an opinion here yeah. tonight. Yes. Everybody, yeah. not just right. one man. Yeah. This is why I'm here. I'm not here to see everything put on my dad's shoulders anymore, to put on my mum's shoulders, to put on every it's single not, crew not here. Just every single, every single crew. You are here every to share meetings. Hold on, I cannot. Three, three people cannot talk the same name. Can we have a bit of order? No, what, what, what's your name? I don't even know your name. My name's Amanda because little people right. apparently yeah. like me don't count. Yeah. Your words. Yeah. Your words yep. in front of my daughter. Yep. Little people like me that aren't willing to sign the Constitution yep. but slog their guts out with three yep. kids mm -hmm. who come down to that station every weekend and never complain don't matter to you. Yep. So it's an what allocation. You... I've never, I've never no, I've ever said that. But yes, what you saying... have said it. Yeah. Yes, you yeah. have said it. Denise, can I just say something here? Denise, in the cabin. can you let your daughter speak here? No, I cannot speak to two no, because people. Because you're denying thing. what you're saying yeah. again. Yeah. Can I ask one important question here? Yeah. Why yep. have you impounded the boat now? It's not impounded. It is. Uh, it is. Because it's nobody can get to it without your permission. My dad right? is head of operations. Uh, yeah. Why didn't you contact him to say, look, they've been in touch with me, my dad totally agreed with you, yep. needed surveying. Why didn't you contact him and say, look, I think Who we might need... What we're I talking think, about here now? I think we might need to take the boat out of service, Kerry, while it gets surveyed. Did you do that? No, yes. you didn't. I said two things to Gordon and Kerry. Because they're like the main links. Is look. Oh well, this... at least you acknowledge no, that then. Now can everybody hey. hear that? Hey, me and Kerry have had some words, but I think we've always shook hands, Kerry, haven't we? How are? Because he's a softer shape, man. He's he not. let anybody he's walk all over him. He, 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 that's, that's gone. Huh? He's tired. He's had. He's had enough. If Kerry's the operation manager, what's giving you the right to take that boat off service? Right. Well, I'll go through Kerry first. When I, as a, as a, who, as a, who give you authority? Me. Me. Right. So, yeah. you yeah. have not authority. Hold on, I'll just tell you, I'll answer You have not got authority to put that boat out of service. You might have put the money in, but that doesn't give you the God's given right to work onto that boat. You come through operations, or the coxswain, who's here, or whatever. You took it on your shoulders yeah. to tell everybody what they've got to do. Honestly, Everybody's put a team together. Everybody's fed up with it now, man. If you want me to still be <laughs> part of it, this group of people, then, then it's got to be A, B, C. If you don't want it to be a part of it, and honestly, I'll just bail it because I didn't really want this hassle. We well, might as well try and take it over ourselves and run it ourselves. And then if it goes tits up, then we've got nobody to blame but ourselves. Yeah, At least we've tried. At least we've tried. I'm happy to bail out. Will you do whatever you want? Then the only issue is the boat we're trying to sort out. Not a problem. So I'm gone. That's fine. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> it was unanimous, wasn't it? It was unanimous. <laughs> but a group of people that can't work my way, and to be honest, it was overwhelming. But they've got passion. You can see they've got passion for the place. Take it over. <laughs> I've listened to some of the comments there. You know, I'm a two. I'm a two. Paperwork orientated, am I? I don't think so, but I might be, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. No problem. Barry resigned as chairman. He has offered to sell the boat to the volunteers. They need to scrape together the money through fundraising. but they will be free to run things as they want from now on. I don't care if I've got to beg, steal or borrow money to make sure that boat stops there. I will. I will. <laughs> you stood on the rope! That boat's coming my way. Rope in the water. <laughs> You need some money to give you that not money. Not loan you it, give you, give you the money or buy you something and not want nothing back out of it. But that's what you need. That right? Mm -hmm. Like Mr. Bernard Matthews. He's dead. He is. 